Good morning, fellow privateers. We hope everyone had a nice weekend. I just got done watching the Masters. What an epic final day. <clears throat> I had to get my ass out of bed a little bit early. I felt like I was watching the uh, British Open. But, uh, you know, Tiger's back. Everyone's been saying he's close. Sure enough, he, uh, he snuck it out. It was an amazing finish. And... <laughs> It's funny if Kepka had made that putt, that birdie putt, which, you know, I don't know what it was, eight feet, that they might still be playing. Anyhow, it's great for the game of golf. It's snowing kind of hard here in the Midwest, and it's just depressing. Thought maybe I'd be golfing this weekend, but instead, we've kind of pretty much been stuck inside. So I'm hoping that's... This is it for the for the uh, season, and spring is about to really show up in earnest. Um, we've got a short week this week. Um, there's a couple couple things to talk about. So yeah, we have a four day week. Uh, Good Friday, this coming Friday, markets are closed in the U.S. and Europe and anywhere else. There's Christians floating around, and. Uh, and then obviously we have Easter Sunday. Um, one other thing to just a reminder. Actually, I don't know if we touch on this or not. I think I said, mentioned this last last week. Uh, we will be on uh, Privateer FX. Will be on uh, the Daily Face webinar, which is Dale Pinkert and Blake Morrow and that crew, the Forex Analytics crew. They do a uh, they do a daily webinar where they start start the start the webinar just talking about markets and going over charts you know something similar to what we're doing and then at the tail end of it they do a um, interview with market participants like ourselves so we're excited to uh, I think that they do have a real, real good product and um, you know, it is a good, it's a good list, and there's some really knowledgeable people on that, within that uh, Forex Analytics brand. And, uh, yeah, so we'll be, we'll be speaking, so it should be about 20, 30-minute uh, interview. We'll share some charts. We'll talk about our, as Dale puts it, our journey um, over the past 25-plus years in the trading world. And I think it'll be pretty insightful, and uh, we're looking forward to it. Should be really good. All right, let's jump to let's see weekend news. The IMF concluded their meetings in D.C. Uh, turns out that it was not nearly as pessimistic as uh, one would have thought. Uh, they're thinking that EM is going to be leading the uh, recovery, the global recovery, which you know we're seeing signs of that already. Um, not expecting, uh, Europe is expected to underperform the U.S. and Asia. We still have Italy, the main risk post the EU elections. Uh, in, they're not expecting inflation to pick up meaningfully, meaningfully in 2019 or 2020. So other than that, it was kind of a non-event. There was, you know, Trump was out tweeting as he does, talking about interest rates should be cut. And the Fed's job is to keep the stock market up. It's just complete bullshit. Um, as far as economic data, um, you know, we do have this shortened week. We have some Fed regional surveys with Empire Manufacturing and Philly Fed. We've got the U.S. retail. Um, we got some data coming out of China. Um, what do we have Tuesday? RBA minutes and ZEW on Tuesday. Uh, we have Kiwi CPI. That should be interesting given their dovishness. And then uh, Wednesday, I guess this is Thursday morning, uh, China retail IP and Q1 GDP would be closely watched. We also have CAD CPI. We have the all-important Australian jobs number this week, the U.S. retail sales, and CAD retail sales. So, you know, a little bit quieter uh, week on the macro front, but, uh, you know, nonetheless, some things that we'll be, we'll be focusing on. Um, one th so here's the, you know, f we like to use Forex Live or I use Bloomberg for my economic uh, data calendar. So you can, 
you know, everyone's got this. These things are a dime a dozen now. Um, but I thought I'd just pull that up. And then this was interesting. Um, I was reading in a piece over the weekend. This is the uh, Economic Surprise Index, the City Economic Surprise Index. And as you can see here, um, the U.S., the blue bar is the current bar. The U.S. is now the weakest of the whole lot. And I'll put this in our in our note. Um, I'm just starting these these daily notes. Um, and you know, CAD's the strongest. So what does that tell you? Well, perhaps dollar CAD is a sale if you want to think about it just on a fundamental basis. Unfortunately, currencies aren't that easy. But you can see like CAD, Aussie, Norway. Uh, even sterling, you know, are kind of on the left-hand side there, um, positive economic surprises, whereas you have um, Sweden, Japan, Europe, and U.S. on the weaker end. And uh, excuse me one sec. Pardon me. Sorry, I'm just getting a call on Skype from my one of our fellow privateers. We need to do our our Sunday call, um, but I'd like to get this video out first. Anyhow, so this is something to, to pay attention. We haven't seen. If I look at a kind of a weekly chart of you of these economic surprises, we haven't seen these types of levels. You know, approaching 60 minus 60, uh, I believe, since 2017. So, you know, especially with what we saw last week in the uh, some of the dollar selling um, uh, the later part of the week, you know, maybe just maybe we're closing in on something and we're going to we're going to get some sort of real movement. Uh, let's take a look at the these are this is my outside day and week uh, or inside day and week outside or inside day and week um, tab. Using Trading View, you can see the the orange uh, week means that it was an inside week. The the cable range was extremely tight. Uh, you know, it is paralyzed by uh, Brexit, and they do have some data coming out. So 131.35, we'll call it 130.20. Um, that's an extremely tight range. Falls have been smoked there. People are people just aren't trading the British pounds. Complete waste of time. Dollar China had an inside week, um, barely. Did close kind of on the lows. That's this orange bar here. And then if I look at the dailies from Friday, the most interesting um, two charts was were uh, the Australian dollar with an outside reversal higher or bullish engulfing day. And uh, we'll get to that chart shortly. And then uh, dollar China, which is pretty much the same same move. Euro Aussie also had a uh, look at Euro Aussie daily, I believe. No, nope, just a reversal lower. I was thinking that might have been outside. Um, anyhow, so we cover the week ahead events, uh, the weekend news, not much of that. Uh, as far as we do have earnings coming out of the U.S. and week guidance is expected. So there's quite a bit of earnings coming up and Apple uh, bookends this at, on um, April 30th. That'll be closely watched. Um, one of my kind of conversations I was having with some colleagues on Friday is Uber's announcing their IPO. They're trying to, you know, $100 billion valuation, blah, blah, blah. I kind of am thinking that whatever, I, I don't know the exact IPO date, but it should be soon. Um, and maybe it's out. I just missed it over the weekend. Um, I think that puts in a near-term top in equities. And, you know, this is something we may discuss tomorrow as well on the, uh, face uh, webinar. Uh, let me get over to some charts here. I got all these. Uh, let's see here. Fractal, so on. Sorry, what do we got here? Not enough memory. Uh, yeah, but earnings earnings are starting. We had some bank earnings. JP Morgan was sounding pretty upbeat, um, ca you know, cautious further down the road. But, um, you know, overall, um, their earnings were pretty good. Their trading revenues were 
complete shite, but that's kind of expected with, uh, you know, the volumes and the, uh, you know, the low volatility and the low volumes that uh, we've been experiencing in pretty much every asset class. Um, I'm trying to find this. I drew a bunch of trend lines and I'm trying to find this. Let's look at fractals. Four. Yeah, we'll get to that. We'll get to these in a minute. Um, why don't we jump right into the charts here? Oh, real quick, positioning. I've read somewhere that the long Mexican peso positions are making new all-time highs. So let's take a look at that daily chart and see what that's all about, because uh, that's that's somewhat interesting. Uh, dollar max daily. Yeah, you can see here we're on the really big area, this 1875. Um, and this looks like it wants to keep moving lower. And that's just a, you know, it's a pure risk on. That makes a lot of sense with the global equities are doing and you know I'm not not too excited to sell low dollar max but um, it is a you know it is a pretty decent risk on barometer risk on risk off barometer uh, take a look at the Aussie dollar uh, we're just under the 200 day moving average we closed at 7175 we got up uh, 72 area is the 200 day we also have a uh, we have a big downtrend line here. It's just annoying because I did draw these earlier and for some reason they didn't save. Um, you could say that we broke it on the weekly. We go over the daily. I think I can connect a few more. Uh, it might be a, a better line. But the, the 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 bottom line is we are we are very close to breaking out and you can see that right here and we have all these old fractals so the, this whole 72 cents areas is very important um, I, you know we'll watch the jobs data out of Australia this week the euro dollar uh, if we take a look at that um, there's a downtrend line that comes in again I drew this earlier on my laptop but it for some reason didn't save uh, I think you can do it. I think it's around here. Yeah, this is a line that people were looking at. Now we haven't, it's touched, it's pierced it, it hasn't closed above it, pierced it again, closed back below it, and that line now comes in today, we call it right around 113.50. Um, cable, we have a Another trend line on the dailies off these highs. And you can see where that comes in. We pretty much touched it on Friday. I don't know what the hell that is. But you can see where that line comes in. We're going to call that right around 130, uh, 131.30, 131.40, somewhere around there. You know, I'd even, I'd even play this, you know, since we did have that inside week, I would play a break at 131.35 um, if there's any positive Brexit or economic data coming out of there. Um, Kiwi continues to trade heavy, but if these other currencies decide they want to rally against the dollar, it'll be dragged up. Dollar CAD is kind of in this triangle type formation. And let me get rid of some of these lines. You know, you can see this kind of triangle formation. That will follow the other dollars. Dollar Mex we talked about. Dollar Yen had a, a big week. Dollar Yen was actually up, uh, it was only up about, it was, yeah, it was up a bit on the week. Um, you know, it did sell off early part of the week and then rallied. There was some M&A activity. I believe it was big Euro Yen buying. I think they maybe finished that on Friday. Um, like Friday Asia. Um, let's pop over to some of the equities. Uh, we've got some pretty interesting 
closes here. This is a new high daily close, you know, for a very long time, back to September. Um, the high daily close in the S&Ps is 2940. The high weekly is 2932. And then if you look at the NASDAQ, it's, you know, very similar, fast approaching these September highs. And uh, the high, I believe it's a high weekly close in NASDAQ is 7674, which is only 20 points higher. Um, if we start taking out these these all-time highs, I think you're going to get a quick push up, uh, S&P to, to 3,000 in a hurry, and, you know, NASDAQ, you know, I could see this thing going up to 8,000. Um, we've kind of gotten this one wrong. We've been trying to fade rallies, and we'll be looking for the, you know, price will tell us when it's time to, when it's time to go. Um, oil is somewhat interesting there's a daily oil chart some indecision up here this whole 64 65 is pretty big we had that red bar close near the lows of the day on uh, on friday and this is going to drive risk there's no doubt um so pay attention because i think it, it will show us the direction of um which way the equities want to go what else do we got i think that's kind of it um you know, we could talk about daily sentiment. S and P's at 90, Nasdaq's 87, Mexican pesos 89, crude oil's 80, the Nikkei's 93, DAX is 84, Euro stocks 84, CAC Caron 84. You get the picture. All of these are pretty long in the tooth. They can stay elevated, and uh, but this is when we pay very very close attention to. Uh, intraday patterns and obviously the daily patterns and if we start seeing any sort of turn then you know we'll get excited and uh, and start playing for some downside but I, I'm not willing to really fight this just yet and it could, it could come out of nowhere I mean we've got to mark sell signals across like every major um, equity indice globally and ETFs and it, the bottom line is this market is long, it's long in the tooth and I think the next, if it does take another leg higher, I, I, I think it's going to be a hard trade. So we'll just wait. We'll wait for the turn. Anyhow, uh, that should do it. A little bit shorter. We get the holiday week. Go watch the Masters highlights because that final day was pretty impressive. And uh, we'll speak to you guys on the uh, European Open. And... Just a reminder, log in, I believe it's 9 Eastern, around 8 o'clock, yeah, 8 o'clock Central time in the U.S. will be the interview with Dale Pinkert and the boys and girls at, uh, at Forex Analytics. All right, good luck. Cheers. Have a great week ahead.